first. Because then you're in real trouble. I don't know what you go back to at that stage. At the same time, they still do have very good team fights. Every taken control of the blue side of Summoner's Rift. And once again, they're following the instruction. They just get rid of the Tom Kent. It is an annoying champion at the best of the times. Game winning in the last game situation, in my opinion. Yep, that's TK Band, as you mentioned. And Nivea also going to join that. So just taking that comfort away from Kira. Gamba continue with their trend of banning Aatrox in every game so far, I believe. They have banned Aatrox and Urgot themselves, but did get it on blue side in the last game. But have to think that with that not true, Urgot is once again going to be banned. Yeah, and sure, you know, having to ban Tom Kench and Nivea opens up the Scion and the Gragas. But really, they weren't the most impactful. As long as this remains a Talia ban, I think the Cloud9 are absolutely fine with how this works out and actually it's not going to huh so now you give a lot of priority back to diamond in this draft and diamond like we said playing well lost like five to six or maybe even seven picks in that draft given how many bands were thrown toward the jungle well now have a lot more options opened up to him as gambit consider their final ban in this first phase yeah well with diamond i mean they banned three first round two on the side of cloud nine one on the side of gambit because they took off the nocturne then he had another two in the next round, and Kindred got picked away. So he was forced very far down the tier list. Okay! <laughs> but Alistar Van Cloud9 snap off the Thresh for Zazel. Yeah, that's a confident pick right there. Zazel's played a couple of games of it already. I thought it looked okay in the team fights, to be honest. Uh, laning phase still a little bit hit and miss. Wasn't able to really land many hooks, but I think that a pick that allows Sneaky to play up in lane. Sneaky played Draven with it once, and they had a lot of good mids priority when they rotated him into that lane. Uh, certainly can work out for Zazel here, but once again, this is a rookie in a tough situation, 1-1 at a world play-ins. Once again, you do not want to go down 2-1 here if you were Cloud9, so pressure on the young man. You also want a champion where the burden of execution is very high. So not only are you given this first pick to try and make something happen, but you need to play exceptionally well to perform on the champion. Gambit, though, on the other side, will react by taking a support. They actually grab Rakan, and they do get the Scion there for Stahel. So the Talia that they may want could potentially be stolen away here, but we'll see what Cloud9 do want to take for picks two and three. And that would be a statement if they go back to the Draven. Really, only things like the Zaya, like the Kaiser, up and available here. Potentially, they can take the Ash into the matchup, but Draven just bullies out those short range 80 carries. See whether they couple it with more of a supportive mid laner, or whether this is the game where they put Licorice on a take and Jensen and Sneaky get to play their carries. Well, we'll see here. It's a singe tower here from Jensen. Actually, a lock in as well. Licorice continuing to show picks here up against Dehos. And that's really interesting. I would like to see him actually play Talia. He goes with a Gragas. The reason I was going to say Talia is because when you have something like a Draven, obviously Lantern can save him, but Talia wall into the Battle Dance combo from uh, Edward in this situation, it's going to be pretty difficult for Sneaky to deal with late game. Uh, it just cuts off all routes of retreat. Uh, in saying that, talk a little bit of the Singe versus Cyan matchup. Singe is going to get to the point where he picks up three Dark Seals and just proxy farms. Uh, he's going to be pretty obnoxious to deal with. And it's going to shorten the windows that Stahos has to join things like the bottom lane with the Scion Ultimate. Going to put big pressure on the turret early on in the game as well. So I like this out of Licorice. Singe versus Tanks historically has always been a pretty good matchup. And having something here, whilst Mike said, you know, don't show anything new, can be another tool if people are going to blind pick tanks versus, versus Licorice. Well, Gambit ban Olaf and Aurelia here. Taking some uh, picks out of the jungle and mid lane. Zaya there banned for Cloud9. Kind of get the luxury of banning away here in this phase to, to Nilotic. Another AD carry. And we'll see if they even pick on him again with this ban or fancy something else as they've got 10 seconds to make their final ban selection for this game. Because you would expect this to just be the AD carry pickup right now for Lotic. Guarantee Kira counter pick one more time. You can see they are very aware of the assassin champion pool that Jensen brings if Svenskeren is playing. So I still expect this to be something like a Kaiser, like an Ash. I mean, if they want to go really defensively, they can go Ezreal, but potentially like damage. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with that Ziggs ban, but we'll brush over it for now. Oh. Like it's going to go back to Lucian. Not a huge fan, Pastry. Okay, why not spawn? I think that Lucian, similar range is what the Draven is going to bring to the table. Does have windows where he can go aggressive, but has to push forward to be able to do so, and should upset, should set up plays where, you know, off the stand aside, Zazel is able to lock him down and take him out. 
Also thinking the team fight gonna have a very difficult job of dealing with uh, the Singe. Singe just gonna run at him and he's not gonna have anywhere to go. Grounded as a Lucian player is a big pain in the bum. Uh, and only a couple of champions bring Grounded to Summoner's Rift and the fact that, you know, one of them is going to be that Singed is, you know, annoying. Well, we'll see what Cloud9 finish off their draft with, but I did a little bit of quick homework there on the Ziggs. Respect to Cloud9 for doing their research. Four plays and four wins for Kira on the year with that pick, so clearly something they've seen already. Cloud9, though, finish off with two globals, one from the jungle in Sven's Talia, and Rise there for Jensen once more for the very safe blind pick mid. Yeah, and whilst it's only 1.5 seconds at its empowered max, that is still going to be a pretty free gank for Sven in the mid lane. This is a duo that can put extreme pressure on Kira and will ensure that Diamond probably once again has to play around the lane. Saying that takes a pretty good matchup in the Galio and they now have a, a massive wombo comp, I think is a fair statement to make. Agreed, and Gambit unsurprisingly are drafting to just pile in and win the big 5-on-5 five -five team fights. Cloud9 perhaps with a bit more finesse, but a ton of lane pressure they can apply all across the map but I think maybe falling back a little bit more to something that is more standard for them. So we'll see what can Sven get done on this aggressive early game jungler, and can Cloud9 with maybe going back a little bit more to what they've shown already in the tournament? Again, both these teams are looking for the same thing, a win and a smooth game. And really, when we have a look at this, both of the teams are only going to get a couple of mistakes because when you play 1-3-1, one, one, you know, Rise as well as Singe, you want to push out side lanes before collapsing mid or taking down turrets versus team fight, if the 1-3-1 one, one gets ahead, you just answer side waves the whole time. And you never get to group up, you never get to use that wombo combo. If you do and you miss execute, you lose so much on the map and you just continue to fall behind. At the same time, if you're the 1-3-1 one, one comp versus the team fighting composition, and someone dies and they're able to force it down mid lane, they're able to take turrets, your comp isn't structured to deal with these big team fights, you know, maybe Sneaky gets caught out then uh, this becomes impossible defend to defend objectives for Cloud9. So both of these teams going to really try and dictate the way they want to play, enforce their will on the game. And I think so far we've seen is that when Gambit have the you know, initiative to be able to make their proactive play, they're going to throw it. It's just about whether it lands. Well, we'll have to see. And of course, with Sven back in the in the lineup with a more aggressive pick, what does the early game look like now? Because you said it already, if the early game is somehow worse, then we have uh, more problems that we'll have to think about later. But Gambit have struggled in the first 15 minutes of the series so far. And you can't have another bad early game if you care. I mean, whilst he technically can, this time <laughs> he around... He absolutely can. <laughs> yeah, this time around, he is going up against a rise to Leah. And if you fall behind as a Galio in this situation, they are just going to continue to pick up. We'll see if Kira can weather what could be quite the storm. Something that a lot of people were talking about when Sven first moved to Cloud9 was how uh, potent the duo could be. Jensen has been a much more supportive player this time around, especially with Blabber by his side being a very aggressive style jungler. But we'll see if the style changes here for Cloud9 with Sven in the lineup once more. Interesting to see that the itemization changes out of Jensen this time around goes towards the Minions Sapphire Crystal, not willing to go with kind of the war of attrition of that corrupting potion and try and force the Galio out. It is going to be an Aftershock Galio, so he is going to be relatively tanky in this earlier stage of the game. So I can respect the choice. Edward also might be looking for a ward here. He does have one ready, so we'll see if he pops it over the back of the Drake Pit, does do so. Can't see the start though. And Sven will be starting on the red buff here with some help from Sneaky and Zazel. But Gambit will get the information very soon as they path over the ward. And the luxury of starting in lane is actually going to be Diamond starting on the Raptor camp. Certainly not as healthy a clear as it used to be on Gragas. But still not a bad thing. He's passive. Rung and Rage has such a big deal as well to mitigate the damage that he takes around the jungle. Certainly looking again to the mid lane though. Jensen huh. doing what he can, throwing ease onto Kira. I want to talk about Svenskeren's path right now because he's actually just gone major buff to major buff. Potentially could be looking to invade. Obviously right now Diamond has actually completed the top side of the map clear. So not going to be in any way worried by the path that Jensen has just taken. Uh, sorry, Jensen, Svenskeren has just taken. And you can see there over Sven 
It has been a while, but these two players have been around for a very long time. However, he is 3-8 versus Diamond and Evos. Yes, but that was a while ago. I think we were still casting together back then. Spawn as Stehos is going to get flipped around by Licorice. Does have the flash, but when is he really going to get a chance to use it? Spend with the red buff applying autos. Oh, actually, nice Q waits it out, but doesn't matter. That's first blood easy for Sven Skarin. Yeah, it certainly is. And as a jungler, watch how Sven Skarin played that game. Just walks in, continually peppers him with the red buff. There is nothing you can do there if you stay Stehos. If you flash, they just flash after you keeps the summoner spell and the repeat gank actually coming through here patriot they really want to put the camp in and this is the true tragedy of any top lane situation when you get ganked you tp back and you get ganked again if stahos dies here it'll be disastrous but it looks like he'll hold on to his life this time yeah all they do right there is guarantee that the wave hits turret there's no freeze as we mentioned you know stahos walks up gets flipped back that should be okay but just auto attacking Great auto spacing, as Double If would say. Doesn't go into the brush, so throws out the threat of volley. He takes first blood for himself, but as a top laner, as a melee top laner, that is just a frustrating situation to be in because there's no respite from getting away from that red buff slow. TP back for both mid lanes here. TS looking nice and even, but Tier already finished for Jensen as Kira invests in some early magic resist. Gonna need it given how much harass he's expecting to take. See Jensen happy to throw spells when he can. Diamond though, clearing right side squad or level four with both buffs. Might look for something here in mid lane. Galio is very good on the gank assist. Can also get in behind bottom if he wants to. Right him down here. Getting in there. Ooh, Flay, not quite enough to get Sneaky out of there. So he gets ignited, he will live. But they do get two summoners for their trouble. Yeah, Flash Auto probably would have taken down Sneaky there, however. Not going to be the case. You can see that they value the summoner spell on Edward who used his flash in game one as the Alistar, then got repetitively ganked. And I said I'm not a massive fan of this lane, but if you match sides with the Draven dash forward, nothing really that Zazel could do there. Didn't go aggressive. The Krish, ooh, flips Kira around. The Dramastasis bus still there, and that's an easy pick off. Instant flash E from Diamond Proxy, and he just picks it up. Yeah, it certainly is, and given the fact that they got him immediately, that Diamond was willing to use the summoner spell, they don't really lose anything mid lane either. So heads up play, it's only bad to chase the Singed if you chase him forever, if you get him immediately. That's just a good play coming out. No teleport going to be there. Gives Stahos another reset top side of the map as well. Fickle caster creep. Blocks Jensen's incoming Q. Kira counters a taunt. He is out of mana, so it's time to go back home. Jensen looking low as well, but with the tier, should be able to clear out a little bit more. Sneaky has returned with his life in the bot lane, but we're gonna may have to play a little bit more respectfully with no summoners available. Yeah, Kira has this weird habit where he just hits a recall in lane and doesn't walk back to the turret. You can see that Jensen walks past the wave, drags it back, kind of stops a recall as well as gets a mini freeze at the same time on your mini map. See where the Lodic continues this pressure in the bottom lane. Both ADs looking uh, pretty feisty with two long swords everywhere. Grounded not quite there, but the flip is good from Stayhouse. Sven starting to chain gank the top side of the map. Does have his flash, but it's going to make him use it. W was lined up well. Stayhouse finally burns his cooldown. Yeah, and I think I know the message that Reaper gave Svenska in before he came into this game, and it was gank the heck out of top lane. Play from Zazel, but still loading with a good bit of damage. Edward looking for the knockup. Little too far forward. He got ignited. That's a kill for Sneaky. And Granite again. Flip over the top and stay house this time with no summoner. Will fall once again as Licorice able to grab that kill. Pops his ult. He ding six as Seos is flipped away by Sven Skarin. And the camp is starting to really hurt this top side. Yeah, I mean, that's a luxury hotel at this stage of the game. Hook goes out, doesn't land on Lodic in the bottom lane. But really, Sven Skarin has spent so much time up top sending postcards to the other areas of the map, but really just punishing Stehos up here. Already turret at half health, and we said that this was going to be a tough matchup regardless. Well, I think it's going to be even more difficult now you're this far behind. Yep, Lekrish about 15 CS ahead as he backs off. Also Spellbook, which I didn't notice from before, so it has an Ignite ready for the huh. next exchange. And once again, as soon as Zazel goes aggressive onto Edward, isn't matching sides with Lottie. That means Lottie can dash forward and they get a nice trade here. However, they can't continue it and then dashes into turret range one more time. I hate to see it. And then a Singe Classic, the flash flip. And that's one of the easier pickups that Sven will have had as he uh, debuts here in Worlds 2018 for Cloud9. And so far, Sven's early games looks really good pastry time. We mentioned he's clear. 
you know, a little bit different. But got to top lane, I think, much quicker than what Stehos would have expected him to be able to do. Uh, and assured that top lane is winning. Because this time around, you know, with the Galio, they have managed to neutralize mid lane. Uh, Jensen not generating as big a CS lead as he was in other games. In fact, you know, only two at this stage. So credit to Kira. But the rest of the map getting much worse across the board. Yeah, bottom lane has been kind of a battle back and forth, but Edward's mishap does give Sneaky that early BF sword, so we have to think that, as expected, but even more so now, Draven Thresh will have the advantage in the 2v2. Jensen just, uh, ooh, hanging around, good flash taunt by Kira, into the Justice Punch, Diamond, looking for the knockback, but Jensen flashes instantly. Yeah, and I mean, you got to really credit Kira there for getting the Summoner spell out, because this stage of the game, Flash Body Slam, about to become up and available with cast is probably going to mean a kill. No boots two yet picked up for Jensen. At the same time, you know, with how accelerated Svenskeren is, if he gets into this mid lane, also going to be difficult to navigate. However, this is a tanky Galio that they're going up against, who is building magic resistance at this stage of the game. And I think that right now, all Cloud9 needs to focus on is retracting this laning phase, making sure that their split pushes are ready to go when it's up and running and, you know, stack up Sneaky's Adoration stacks because Draven's quite a good pick to play against Gambit when you think about it. They will give you kills. They will go for over-aggressive plays and really Sneaky has punished that already to the tune of a kill. It will only get worse as that stacks up throughout the game. What side 2v2 going to start off? Sneaky though, taking damage from Lodic. I think Zazel should stop hooking the support. If he holds that for when the dash in is there, is now top lane. Two v two brewing, knock up there onto Licorice, but they are going to dive in on stay or still diamond. He's going to move in, but Licorice running around. He's got the ulti procked away, and now he's going to try and catch this wave. Kira here as well, though. Going to be a quick three v two for Gambit in just a second. Massive miscommunication coming out. Oh yeah, they're actually going top side, but Sven just gets out of there. He's forced to flash, but that means Licorice can walk out very easily. Yeah, Stayos looked like he wanted to go in, hesitated. Kira left, tried to chase a singed. All of a sudden, they lost everywhere not able to get anything with the first two ultimates out of the scion and the galio and meanwhile mid lane Jensen's just sitting there auto attacking a turret he hasn't even tried to rotate up throughout it so gambit one more time hesitating on the play and get punished and of course kira's tp as well goes mid to try and protect that turret and on the tp top side gambit losing options here on the map a c9 just walk in and walk out top lane now, really, all they have is bottom lane. Every ultimate used elsewhere. Sven is also tracking down there, has the Weaver's Wall, but Diamond, first of the punch, if they are able to get the ultimate out of Edward onto Zazel, they can make this work. Cloud9 have to know, though, that they've already tried it twice in the other sections. Have to think they're coming now. Diamond, though, being patient, gonna wait in the brush that there is no vision for right now for Cloud9. Lodic again, now they know. Edward oh. looking for the play, but he doesn't quite grab it. Gets a flash out, that's very nicely done, but he went so early that he didn't wait for that. I actually think he could have probably just run towards Sneaky with the increased movement speed, nearly guaranteed the summoner then battle danced after him, but still got to applaud them for the proactive play. That was the last one left available on the map at that stage. Not able to cash into the maximum, but Draven without flash can be repeat ganked, especially given the fact that both Edward and Diamond still have their flashes available. We'll need to look for, again, the Gambit bot lane to get something going as Diamond continues to find big involvements for the side. Kira also picking up blue buff, so he's going to walk back around. And despite the fact that Jensen is even in CS, it feels like Kira is losing the wave clear battle. That might be evened up for a little bit now that Kira has blue. But even when Kira leaves the lane, you saw what happened. Forced to burn TP to get back to the lane. If Kira can't get involved in good engages for Gambit, they really struggle in the mid game. And that's what it's going to come down to, Pastry. Right now, Kira, even though he's losing that mid uh, wave battle, he's not getting first access to it. Jensen's pushing him in. If there's ever a fight in this area that he can just ultimate to, obviously he doesn't have the best. Oh, down. what a beautiful combo by Cloud9. And that time it was the correct decision to hook the Rakan. Able to just set him up beautifully for the flick. Jungle item complete. Another stack going over to Sven. Oh, hello. Another one there. Oh, flick oh. quite land. Should have fled the other way, perhaps, this diamond. At least burns the summoner. The ignite.
plus the whirling death does give Zazel the kill. And beautifully played out of C9, just everywhere now. Top lane winning massively. They translate that into some mid lane pressure, attack bottom lane, and now they've cracked the map wide open. Yep, had it wrong all along. Sneaky calculated that ulti as they do pick off the jungler. That's probably going to mean bot tower goes down as well, so C9 will give even more gold to the Draven. Sneaky one last auto, Lantern's there. Oh no, can't click it when you're charmed. Sneaky shutdown, greeds out for a turret. They work, taking the dragon simultaneously. Generally two objectives at the same time can be a risky idea. That could give over, you know, that advantage that Sneaky was just able to pick up in the form of a turret back to the bottom lane if they continue to push in here. In saying that, Cloud9 making the first move everywhere, really. The game's being played to their pace. And we said that that was one of the objectives that Gambit probably needed to look for. Jensen in trouble. Combo there by Kira, but he's kind of out of CC. Here's Fen Skeren to force them away, but Steos and Diamond looking for the ramp around. They actually grab Sven with the ulti, but Steos now cutting around as Sven, protecting under his turret, a TP in for Licorice, who just cancels and continues sieging top lane. And once again, it looked like a miscommunication. Diamond actually just ulted Sven out of the ultimate of Steos. Saved him a lot of damage there. Steos was just stuck underneath the turret, couldn't really do anything. That means that Licorice now just gets to take top lane turret for free. And both members of C9 just walk away. And it's been unacceptably messy for Gambit in this early game, which is not what we wanted to see as they look to shore it up. And Cloud9 feeling pretty far in control. Up 4,000 gold as Licorice did take the top out of turret. And I just do want to go back to Champions League because I think if you swap this matchup for Diamond, if he's the person playing the Talia, as he's in trouble. Ignite, dead. I don't know what he was doing. He died, unfortunately, for him, so we may never find out as Edward does get himself away. Zezel's box not up quite soon enough, and Edward lives this time. Goes back for the ward. Round two, Pastry. Oh. oh. Mind game him. Hit in the corner. Still, mid turret getting seed, so we'll have to take it. Uh, Sven, going in, going too far in. What on earth was that wall? He didn't want to get on the wall, Pastry. He wanted to use it to cut off the wave clear that was coming through the jungle. Instead, he jumps on top of the wall. You know, the old man hands strike again. Where's the young kid, Blabber, willing to take over the keyboard? I don't know about that, because the only way that happens if you tap the R button too many times is Talia. <laughs> If he's slower on the mechanics, that should be easier to not have that happen. <laughs> right. Just press it once and AFK. I'm trying to give him an out, but if you want to just do him like that, that's fine. Hook once again on. Alrighty, that might be a kill to Edward. Pops the quickness. There is Kira with the ulti. Run sneaky gets knocked up, but still safe enough. And unfortunately for Gambit right now, nothing is just going their way. You know, that is an ultimate burnt from Kira from Edward in return for a very nicely timed hook coming out of Zazel. They're just trying to fight for vision where they don't have numbers, where they don't have strength. And the experience of Cloud9 is just starting to punish them. This game, getting close to the situation where I was talking about, where the 1-3-1 one, one is going to be set up and you just have no one to answer really either side lane at this stage of the game. That's going to be, you know, a lot of AP even built up on Licorice for this stage. And with the Insanity Potion still very tanky. So you're just losing out on multiple fronts without many good ways to come back. I still think if, you know, the game was flipped and that was a little bit more even and Gambit able to force around objectives like this, their composition could have worked out. I don't think it's necessarily all draft. But when you have only a go forward heavy engage comp like Gambit does, you do not cope well with 1-3-1 one, one pressure. Nope, and the cherry on top will be that Rift Herald of C9 with already the Rise and the Singe pushing down the side lanes. So they'll have the Rift Tower to bust down mid. And like you said, that pattern in that 1-3-1 one one can now begin. Yeah, and so the one area I was really critical of Cloud9 split push pressure was the fact that Jensen kept answering waves before he saw people on the map. And we'll see whether that is going to be an issue into today's game because he got picked a couple of times, I think, in the Dead FM series. Shelly, though, ready to rampage here in the mid lane. Gets distracted by uh, Custer Creep, but more than enough there. Sneaky delivers the last two axes, and Cloud9 do fill the outer ring nice and cleanly. And there's Jensen. His team pushes in a wave. He sees where they are, and now he starts assaulting the minions. And all he, in this game, all he really needs to see is three members, because in a 2v1, unless it's probably Lodic and Edward, he will be able to just withstand the initial damage and then run his way to safety. Has got the Merc Treads. Is a pretty quick rise with that phase rush, so I don't think he's all concerned about you know, a couple of members. Been saying that probably does want to play this one nice and safely 
I think that an area that they keep saying is that they want to feel like they're in more control of their mid game when they do have an advantage. They want to be able to prove that they can play that well thought out game plan and not make the unforced errors that maybe they've been making through the play in group stages. Now would be as good a time to any to show that. See how it goes here. Mountain Drake up in a minute 20. Not bad. And you're trying to push all three lanes. And Zizel and Sneaky just hanging out in the mid lane. Getting the pressure started and stacking it up. Stayos is camping with a two level disadvantage in a lane. He gets exhausted by the Spellbook Singe. And nice ult. Doesn't get himself flipped, but still forces a cooldown. And he just didn't know where anyone else was on the map. You know, maybe Talia is rotating down to that play because they have no vision on the top side of the map where Svenskeren currently is. And as a Talia, this is your job at this stage of the game. So when you play 1-3-1, a lot of junglers start invading pretty heavily into, you know, the forest. But you shouldn't be doing that. You should be hard clearing your camps while your bottom lane is reset and then sitting near them to stop the hard engage because he has tools like the Weaver's Wall, like the Flick to disengage the fight. And then if they go over aggressive, obviously he has a lot of damage to be able to punish that. So I think that right now Sven showing his class, showing that he can slow the pace of the game down, does know his role in this situation, is able to execute upon that. And I think Cloud Neither is certainly one of the reasons you bring in a veteran like Sven Skarin. Just bring, a, again, a little bit more stability and a little bit more calm into the team. Blabber, for how strong he is as an individual mechanical player, is extremely hot-headed as a rookie jungler. So again, you bring in the man that can calm things down, that has a ton of experience in high-pressure situations, and Cloud9 calmly gonna move themselves down to this mountain drake. And this is a stage of the game where, you know, you love being sneaky because all you've done for the last couple of minutes is, uh, minutes is catch mid lane waves. You're just stacking up that adoration passive. You know that eventually they are going to have to force a play, something like a Baron fight where they try and 5v5. You know, maybe they force mid lane and you hope that it's an overreach. You hope that you're able to punish it through a kill. Maybe then you cash in. Maybe it's just the wave clear satisfaction, but I think rising the situation feels pretty good. All you really have to do is look at your minimap and throw throw spells at the incoming minions. And well, the ideal situation now for C9 is that they play PvE the rest of the game. They go in. Yep, Lantern there, but the CC chain not quite long enough. Still, though, Lodic is able to find the damage. Yeah, and the difference this time is Ben wasn't there. They had him cleaning out his jungle camps. Jensen had just left to rotate towards the top side of the map. So instead they take the kill, they force with the uh, summoner spells and they're looking for a turret. Yeah, they also TP in oh. the Gambit, very committed to this play. Zazel too far forward. That's a rookie error as he does flash his way out to safety. And this time it isn't the ones, but it's the mid lane group that gets caught out, gets caught napping, gets forced upon and gets taken down. They burn the teleport looking for another play and they also get the summoner spells out of Zazel. So Gambit showing that they know that there are only windows for them to play around. Want to take a look at this? You can see right now, Sven Skarin has called that he is taking Wolf Camp. They haven't backed away. They get flashed upon, they get blown up. Just an unforced error coming out of the C9 lineup and a couple more of them and all of a sudden the team fight comp back online. That's Nicky Wolf. Come off the respawn and move himself back towards the mid lane. All those adoration stacks pace through I know! Now think about them, that was so much gold. Uh, Hate to see it. There's still 5,000 gold up, that's a lot of gold as well. I'm still thinking about the stacks. <laughs> Fans can be so fickle sometimes, you know? One minute they love you, the next play you're dead, and half of them are somehow going away. C9 invades the jungle, do get the red buff onto Sven. So again, continuing to apply pressure and get vision, important in any sort of tri-lane pushing situation. See if Cloud9 can clean up some of this as uh, Stelios has found himself in a spot of bother as Sven. Oh, he's gonna the lane. Ball. All right, getting flipped around, can't even flash out to maybe the river where it could be safe. And Licorice does most of the work himself, but Sven, nice assist. Hook's on. Hook off. The new karate kid. However, <laughs> at the same time, I mean, that's a really nice game coming out of Sven. They had rotated all their pressure up. You could see that Sejos thought he was safe to push that wave down. But with the Rylize, with this burning face, with the Leandri's torment, Licorice just does so much damage already that if any kind of, you know, CC is applied, a little bit more damage comes. That's an easy kill to pick up, even though that this is the Abyssal Mask into, you know, more magic resistance from that Stone Plague going to come out eventually. And 
Stehos has just had a horrible game three. He's been picked on from start to finish. Yep, again, almost a nice bait of the sign pick here by Cloud9 as Jensen still fighting Kira, but Sven this time is in the right spot. The 2v2 is started, but Kira's almost dead before it starts. Azel looking for the hook, but he does miss his diamond low enough as Kira will also charge in, but Sneaky able to clean him up as Cloud9 collapsed. This time, Gambit, they try to find the play, but it's Cloud9 that will make them pay. What a fight out of Cloud9. One more time, Jensen is not worried about the 2v1. Runs in blindly, able to bait even more members to continue. And 22 minutes in, this one looks a lot more like game number one. They're going to take the Baron. They'll wander in, they'll take the Baron at around the same time frame. And we talked about it, the Mountain Drake, the Baron. Sin starting to win his side lane. All these things point to just making it harder and harder for Gambit to stop the incoming tide. And you got to feel sorry for Diamond here because he thinks that he's got the body slam in, but he does so much damage to himself, dashing through the pebbles and a very nice flash out of Svenska and gets him to safety. Meanwhile, Jensen just can't go down. Movement speed, so good at being able to get you out of those tricky situations and the collapse is completed. You can see Diamond not very happy with how that play worked out, but I mean, when you're 5,000 gold behind already, you've got to throw some plays with a team fight comp. You can't allow your team to get forced off that many objectives and they went for it, didn't work. Now they're 9,000 gold behind. Cena looking to close this game in quick order. And perhaps one of the most frustrating ways to lose as well. It sucks to get 1-3-1. One, one. Sven Skarin just peppering rocks over the top, poking Gambit members. Stand aside actually hits Stehaus, but not enough follow-up to try and extend. Still, Jensen, though, with double Baron Cannons is hammering this mid lane out of turret. And you see, they're just throwing skill shots at them. They know that the wave clear is lacking. As long as they protect these two cannon creeps, the turret will eventually fall down, and they've caught a fish. Hook on Kira. But again, charging in, Edward trying to find something as sneaky as to cut his way out of there. They do grab one, Licorice falls on the front line, but Gambit don't really have enough follow-up here. As Jensen still charging through, Whirling Death, barely able to attack Stehos, but it's Rise that finds the final spells to seal his death. And a trade, C9 will take, they've still got Baron, they'll bust down mid turret, they'll take the inhib as well. And pretty well played out of Cloud9, the hard engage was there, but it was missing. Layers not able to get everyone in at the same time. They're actually teleporting to this way. They oh, might be what a savage hook from Zazel! And Edward's dead before it can dash away to safety. Kira also TPing behind enemy lines as Diamond eats the next lasso there from the Thrash. He'll pop the watch, but they'll take the turret. The hook Another again hook. finds onto Diamond. Zazel make it three in a row. He will fall, but Cloud9 collected almost everything as Kira ults away almost to his death. But that last E will take him down as well. Yeah, and certainly will and now with four members dead they can continue to push, press into this base stayhos going to try and come back up and available and slow this down the cloud knight could potentially look to end here you said it already spawn when you start to get beaten in one three one your mistakes just amplify gambit for exponentially further behind in this game and c9 are looking to open up this nexus and give themselves the win they take one turret they will back away for now but Gamba are woefully far behind. Yeah, they certainly are in pretty disciplined play. As Licorice was in the mid lane, could have walked another creep wave up there. Instead, they decide to just back away. They know they're in such a commanding position. 14,000 gold in the lead right now. And the mid 2v2 has just gone terrifically well. Jensen once again holding his own 6-0-2 on this rise. But really, it has been Svenskir and Zazel starting up these plays. The first hook, as you mentioned, that's pretty dirty. But the second one to continue the pressure to pull him through the pebbles. And then there's a third pastry time. Just has Diamond on a rope right now. Could not go anywhere. Eventually did fall down. But I mean, at that stage, job well done. I think more than enough value accrued for that death. So we'll certainly be happy with that situation as Ocean Drake the second goes over to Cloud9. And they've got one more spot to see it's Diamond. What are you doing there? To be fair, this time he did dodge the hook. This couldn't Still dodge. ultimately the fell down. or the rise route, which is literally undodgeable. <laughs> <laughs> and with no jungler, you know, without that cast to start up a fight, even if you did start one up, you're 15,000 gold behind. No real good place on the map to be right now if you are a gambit. Well, stay off and Edward can maybe make it happen, but I'm gonna call the chances extremely unlikely as Cloud9 will take down inhibitor number three. They're just walking it in here. 
to finish off this third game and push himself to one game away from match point. Edward, he tries to do what he can, but he explodes to Sneaky in the front side of the fight. Kira with a good set of taunts, but they just don't have enough to do much of anything. Draven, a double cash in as Sneaky withdraws from the ATM of two members of Gambit. The Nexus explodes. Diamond Prophet, Diamond Prox explodes one more time, and Sneaky finishes with a triple kill flourish as Cloud9 will camp the mountain and take themselves to match point versus Gambit. And you've got to say a much better performance out of Cloud9 this time around. The change up in the junglers certainly did its job. Camp Licorice's lane, get him a huge advantage, make him untouchable in the side lane, then join the 1-3-1. And Gambit now very firmly placed on the back foot because that all-in comp did not work. I mean, I think for me, the, the end of that game says it all when we flash to the player cams because the rock there for Gambit, Diamond looks shattered after that loss. Yeah, and you got to think that, you know, he's playing the side of the jungle matchup that he wanted because he was a person that took priority on the Gragas pick. Would have been able to pick up the Talia if he wanted it. Wasn't, a ve uh, wasn't his decision in this game. And... You have to say that Spence Kieran really, with some creative early game pathing, you know, two up the top lane is not something you see all that often in comp play anymore. Uh, made him pay for that. Certainly Sven looking good and helping Licorice out in the lane where they knew they could get a lot of work done. And I think for that, Sven Skeren doing what I think we wanted to see. Playing stable and just giving the Cloud9 a much smoother ride through that game. Yeah, absolutely. The other player that you have to highlight for their stability was Jensen in the mid lane. I think ended up without dying in that performance and also just had much better control. Didn't overextend for his pushes, was able to have impact in the team fights. And when you're in that situation where you just, you know, no good answers left and you're against a rise that is that accelerated, it becomes very difficult to play around. Well, we will have to touch back on Sven Skarin again because he is our MasterCard player of the game for this one. Just felt like he couldn't do anything bad. Yeah, it certainly did. I mean, from the situation where he's just able to get in the top lane. Once again, this is a level two Talia. No longer does Scuttle Crab give you that level three mark. Plays the gank very nicely, cuts off any form of retreat, picks himself up the first blood of the game. And I think that from there was just able to repetitively access lanes at will. I think, you know, the other frustrating thing is stay host. Every time you die, you're getting flicked away from your create wave. You're not able to clear it out the way that Scion wants to. And I mean, once that was just snowball, there was no real way back in. I really like kind of what Cloud9 did there. It's saying, okay, how are Gambit beating us? It's picking good, strong 5v5 comms. It's like really doubling or tripling down on engage in the mid game. And Cloud9 says, fine, we'll just play clean 1-3-1 one, one, and just not let you do anything. And losing that way, I said it already, it sucks. Yeah, especially given the fact that you're like, we have a winning 2v2 bottom lane. So let's continue to play towards that. You know, we're going to take the Rakan. We're going to take our self in this situation. And then the Draven Thresh comes out one more time. They really do stop a lot of that aggression. The early laning phase still looked pretty good. However, as soon as Edward overextended one more time, I mean, he... Lodic really has been burnt by Edwards multiple times across this play in stages. You, yeah. know, you give that kill across, all of a sudden Sneaky is accelerated. You can't really go in for those trades anymore. You just don't have a victorious part of the map to play around. And Kira, once again, did his job okay this time around, but he was never going to really smash the rise in the split. And they just slowly but surely cut off all their options to winning that game. Well, certainly did. And now with C9 at match point, it's time to step away. We'll see if Gambit can bring this series to a game five when we return.